Hi, this is Rochelle Scrap Craftastic, and I am back to working on organization. As you can see here, I have the Michaels, oh, I don't remember the brand, but I have this drawer, set of drawers. Um, I guess it was supposed to be similar to the Ikea drawers, but as you can see, it's falling apart. Now, that might be partially my problem, my fault, because I had some pretty heavy pieces in there. I had these clear covers in there, and I had all of my embossing folders in one of the drawers. So, what happened to this one, I, I've already started trying to repair it, is the bottom fell out. I think this is the drawer. Yeah, that's the one that I had the heavy vinyl covers in so i'm in the process of gluing that i have the you can see there the bottle of uh wood glue from the dollar tree is holding that up in place until it dries then i'll be working on this drawer that's fallen the front is falling off the bottom was falling out this one had all the embossing folders and my decorative duct tapes. I've actually started using those to tape up packages. But so yeah, this is what I'm working on today. Here's another drawer that needs to be kind of gone through. A lot of this stuff is for junk journals. I kind of just toss it in here. It needs to be organized and straightened. Then I have this, I was keeping wood pieces. Uh, and then I just started tossing some of everything in here. I need to go through that. Then this is bling. And I have some lights in here, but it's mostly bling. Bling, brads, things like that. So like these ribbons, they don't belong in here. They need to come out. So I will clean all of that. Hopefully this will hold up. I'm not sure what I'm going to actually be able to put in these last two drawers since they are falling apart. But I just wanted to show you that and now I'm going to go back to my desk and work on organizing my embossing folders. Not sure where I'm going to be putting those once I get them straightened out. I don't think I want to put them back in the drawers here. So I need to figure out what am I going to use these bottom two drawers for once I get everything glued back together and straightened out. Okay, so I am back at the desk. These are all of my embossing folders. So for as long as I've had them, I've kept most of them in the packaging. I've already started taking some out so that I can kind of get rid of the packaging because it just makes them sloppy as, when it comes to storing them. So I'm going to set some of that aside. Um, these are some of the folders that I have already taken out of the packaging. I don't know why I was keeping them because they are marked with the brand that they are, but it is easy to see what the um, embossing folder is when it has this little picture on the packaging. But I mean, I can pretty much figure out, let's see, let me get one of these cards. That, that is a tree. So I don't need that. So I also have this locker box bin from Dollar Tree. It's called a basket. This was in a recent um, haul video. They're kind of flimsy. I'm not crazy about the quality. I do prefer the Ikea bins. I don't remember how much I paid for my Ikea bins. Maybe we'll take a trip to Ikea soon. Also, the Ikea bins are straight up and down. They are not angled like these locker bins. There's also a hack for the locker bins where you can get this tray from Dollar Tree and place it kind of like a lid and you can stack uh, the locker bins on top of each other. So I don't know if I'll be able to do that with this system. I'm kind of running out of shelf space, but we'll see what happens. Anywho, so I'm just going to kind of organize these. I guess and just put them in like maybe put all the trees and nature together or something like that because I don't know if I'm going to put dividers now I was hoping I could put them this way but it looks like I'm going to have to do them that way and I may end up using a different bin because of that but let's just get them in the bin so let's see I'm going to do patterns together so like this brick pattern, got the wood grain pattern, got the swirlies, 
I'm going to put those together. Then I have these 3D uh, embossing folders. Let's set those aside. I don't know if I want to take those out of the packaging. These are, I think, dandelions. So I'm going to put that as nature. This one is, I don't even know where I got this from. The packaging is horrible. This is a Sizzix. This kind of looks like a pattern or a decorative piece. So I'm going to put that there. Here's another 3D. I don't know why I kept this packaging. This is for the big shot. This is a Sizzix. This is nature. Will this fit? Barely. I might have to put that one. Oh, I'm not showing. So, so this is how I'm, I'm putting them in here so far. Maybe I can turn them on the side. They won't sit all the way down to the bottom, but then I have this giant Sizzix one. That's not going to work. I'm going to have to figure something out for that. Let's get packaging, packaging, packaging. Can go in the recycle bin. Here's some more that I already took out. So this is a polka dot pattern that can go up here in the front. Let's make sure we turn them all the same direction. This one's a swirly pattern with butterflies. Does that help for you to be able to see it a little better? So that, all right, and then this is another 3D. So I'm gonna put these big 3D embossing folders aside. And let's go ahead and open up the rest of these. Doris folders, this is music. Maybe I should cut this out and stick it on the back. What do you think? I don't know. Is that too much trouble? I mean, I can obviously see what that is. So that's a, another pattern. Oh, I got a Christmas tree. I haven't used a lot of these, obviously, because I don't know. It's something about the way I had things set up. It was just like a headache to use my embossing machine but now I have a whole table specifically set up for that. So it makes things a little bit easier. I'm more inclined to use them. This is another pattern. This one is time clocks, clocks. And this is from Tuesday morning for 99 cents. That's a pattern. Got a frame situation here. So I'm gonna put that with a Christmas tree. And the spell binders. Um, this is fairly new. Okay. So then we got the new spell binders. These are a little different, but I don't think I need the packaging for these. And the good thing is most of this is documented uh, on my haul videos so I can get rid of the packaging I don't know why I have such a hard time with that but this is another pattern that's what the pattern is now these are tougher they may not go we're gonna have to figure out another bin for these but for now this will have to do there's another one I've used this one with the leaves Follies. Now these, I kind of want to keep the packaging, but I won't. This is a 3D Tim Holtz by Sizzix die. Definitely too big to go in like that. Um, this is the wood texture. Tree rings is what it's called. Maybe I can make a book and put all of those in there and then I can just flip through the book and see what I have. Huh, I can do that, let's do that. Okay, I feel better. So I don't wanna just toss all of my packaging. I can just cut out the bits that I need.
what made me start this today is I'm gonna be doing a video showing how to make the leather look paper and I use an embossing folder to do that also I need to do some embossing for the coffin journal project uh, both of those will be over on my other channel so I just when I went in the drawer to get the folder that I needed and the bottom fell out I was like okay and the front came off it's time to do something about this so that is why we are here this is a necessity okay so that is all of that I just need to find a better container because this one isn't going to cut it but for now okay then I have these from Spellbinders okay so that's poinsettias and that's a floral these are too big Maybe they could go, oh, they go in like that, no problem. Okay, so I'll have to figure out some better system to organize them, but at least they're all neat in one place. Let's stick this in here too, okay? So all in one bin, I can set it on the shelf and have a little room to grow, which I don't think I need to grow. Okay, so let's get rid of the plastic. And let's start that book. I'm going to have to make myself a reference for my craft supplies. I just came up with that idea. So I'm going to grab a composition notebook and we can get started. All right, so this is a composition notebook. One of the ones I shared. This one is from Dollar Tree. This is one of the more expensive ones, believe it or not. Um, if you buy your composition notebooks during back to school, you can usually get them for around 50 cents. So, it's not decorated. We'll probably come back and decorate it up. I think I'm gonna leave, let's leave 10 pages in the front. So I'm gonna leave these pages in the front. Let's put those together. That way I can have a title page, I can have indexing, whatever the case needs to be. And then I can add these two. I don't know how I want to place these. And do I want to save the whole thing? Also, I don't know if I should be gluing these pages together. I don't think we need to do all of that, do we? We're already adding weight to it by um, gluing these pieces down. So, okay, so I'm gonna cut the piece off that has the barcode. I don't think we need that piece. All right, so then how do I want to place it on the page? We put it close to the spine, that's going to create bulk. So we'll put it closer to the edge. We'll just stick it in the center. And I need to get some inexpensive tape runners because this is going to take quite a bit of tape. Oh, it has instructions on the back too. So we're going to use this washi tape and tape this down so that I can flip it over and see the information on the other side. I'm gonna do it on this side. See how one little project evolves into multiple projects. Now, does that work for turning the page? Probably not that great. Should I have put it on the other side? Let's see. This is all an experiment. You're watching me figure this out <laughs> in real time. All right, let's try it that way. I think that's better. I don't think I need to do that for all of the 3D embossing folders. Now what order do I want to put these in? I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's try this with the tape. Okay. 
I don't know. Maybe we need to. These pages are so flimsy. What shall we do? I think I am going to play around with gluing the pages together. Now I've had this since back to school and I was going to do a test of it. So I guess this is as good a time as any to test it out. These are the pin and gear glue sticks. It says disappearing purple acid free non-toxic washable. Let's see how well they hold up. And I've noticed that things that are supposed to be really, really good do not hold up in this climate. I think I'm gonna remove this one more time. Take one of these extra pages, or two of them. So if I glue these two together, put that on there. I need to glue this these two together. I don't know if this washi tape is gonna stick after all of this. Set it aside. Okay, let's try it. Probably need something to put along the edge. Do I need to make sure that it is fully covered? If so, this is gonna take quite a while. <laughs> Ew, that's horribly lumpy. That's much better. Okay. Let's keep it moving. So two pages. Should I use glue stick on this too? Would it be better than the tape? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna give this Walmart pin and gear glue a thorough testing. All right, what's next? This one, this is my favorite one, the one with the skulls. This is the one that got me started with the 3D uh, embossing folders. So we got this one that we can flip open to see the instructions for the machine. Then the others are completely glued down with the name, the number of what I have available. Okay, then we're gonna move to this one. I think that is all of this style. This is another style. So quiet now with the fan and off and the dryer off. Oh, I didn't glue the pages together. I gotta remember to do that. <laughs> so let's glue them together. The edges first, that seems to work best. And then stripes down the middle. Then carefully lay it down. That first one, I think I just did too much. Cause since these, these are coming out much better when I just carefully lay it down a little bit at a time. But when it's covered up mostly like this, it's fine. Okay. So I can flip through, see what I got before I go digging around in the box.
All right, let's get this packaging back up here and take off the bits that I need. So for these pages, I'll do something different. I don't think there's like a number or anything. This is called Butterfly Swirl. So I can just label it once I put it down. All right, so I'm not gonna make you suffer through all of this. I'm gonna cut the rest of these Doris uh, images out and label them and then I'll figure out how I'm going to add them to the book. All right, so I'm back. I have, well, I thought I got all the trash out of the way. Um, I went ahead and trimmed everything down that I needed to trim. So all of these, except for these from the paper studio. These are very thick and I don't really want to put them in here. Also, some of the information is on one side. The picture is on the other side. I don't want to have to tip this in like I did the other one because it's heavier. So I'm going to attempt to use this circle punch, my Fiskars circle punch to punch out some of the pattern. And then I can write in what it is, kind of like what I'm doing with these. Cause I'm just going to put these on a page and write in what they are. I actually could probably put them on an external page and just tip that page in to make it a little more sturdy since these are chipboard weight. But let's see if this punch can punch through this chipboard. Not really. Gonna have to be a little brutal to get it done, but I'll get it done. There's one side of that punch that doesn't punch well. I'm gonna try and treat it with some uh, aluminum foil. Some people say that works, some people say it doesn't. We'll find out eventually. Okay. So those are punched. These are ready to go. Those are punched. I have some more 3D from Sizzix and Tim Holtz to add to this. Since that's wood, let's follow up with more of the same. I should have been doing this all along with stamps and dies when I got something new, I should have cataloged it. I did kind of start that with my wood block stamps, but then I stopped buying a lot of wood block stamps. So that kind of fell by the wayside. Then I have these. I think I should do this one next. This one also, I thought it had instructions. These instructions aren't worth keeping. So I'm just gonna glue that one straight down. Then let's do this one since it's another oddball. Now I kept both pictures because they have different information on them. And I'm not gonna overthink that too much. I'm just gonna glue them down. All 
I put the eyeballs in there. Let's do some more 3D. Probably should have put all my 3Ds together. But it's fine. These are heavier. Hopefully the glue will hold them. We'll soon find out. All right, let's do these spell binders. Oh, we're almost finished with one whole glue stick. So far, I like this glue. I don't know how well it's going to hold up. Kind of wish that I had picked up more of it. I guess the next time I order my groceries, if they still have any in store, I'll have to order me some. <laughs> I didn't need to do that. Uh oh. We're going to have three pages glued together here because that was a mistake. Well, I guess I'll get to see what it's like to have three pages glued together. It's probably not so bad. Let's go ahead and glue this page together. And the reason that I'm using the Dollar Tree is that if I want to just keep going with these, I feel confident that I'll be able to find um, composition notebooks year round at Dollar Tree. I'm not sure that they would only be 50 cents year round at Walmart or Office Depot. So... And I kind of like same, same. And if I'm just gluing things into the book, I'm not using it for planning or writing. Oh, that's not good. But if I'm not using it for planning or writing in, then I don't really care about the paper quality. Uh, I've mentioned in previous videos that the ones from Vietnam work well with fountain pens. So this one is, it says made in India. So yeah, Oops. glue that down a little bit. And I may come back and put some washi tape on the edges. Let's do these. I think I'm gonna do them something like that. Then I can write next to them. Where's the other one? What they are. Or do it like that. I was thinking about putting them on another piece of paper and then adding that paper in. I have this construction paper that I haven't used much of. Let's try this paper since it's already bent up. Should I even go that far into this? I'm just gonna try it just to see what it's like. <laughs> just to see, this is gonna be another test of the glue as well. I wish they would have put all the information together. That would have been great. I feel like this is getting out of control. Is this too much? All right, let's glue these down. Let's do something similar with a different color. 
Let's go for the yellow. All right, so I'm gonna leave space in between so that I can write. Um, and I'm just gonna leave those two on the row by themselves. So this one is assorted clocks. And these are all Doris. Let's cut that off and add it to the page. Maybe I should have used the green paper. Okay, I think I got everything in there and we didn't run out of glue. <laughs> okay, doke. so we got room for index. This is our instructional sheet. These are the embossing folders that I have. So I can just easily flip through here and see what I have available. That's pretty neat. And I think the extra, the construction paper gave it the page a little extra weight to hold up maybe. I could always come back and just staple those and pop another sheet over it. That could work too. All right. So I guess that's it. I'll probably go in and add some washi tape on the edge. Um, and I might try to do washi tape that relates to what the image actually is, except for this first one. I would just do this basic white tape because, let's put this chipboard behind it. That way I'll know this is an instructional page maybe. So possibly do a key for the pages that have this washi on them. I'm not a fan of wrapping the washi around the page because I know I won't get it straight. So I just put it on the edge and then the other side I can put something different. Now I might change my mind if I get some wide washi that I wanna use, but I don't see that happening. Let's put something pretty on this page. I think this is good for this one. Well, let's put the wood grain on here. I can't resist. Should I wrap this one around? This isn't really wood, but it gives that impression. So I'm going for it. So I guess I'll be calling these organizing sessions because one thing leads to another, leads to another, and it just keeps going. So I'm going to stop here for now. Um, this is another use for an inexpensive composition notebook. And now I'm thinking maybe I should have did a mat for everything, but it's okay. Um, cause I, I really like the way these pages are and it kind of makes the graphic stand out so that I see it quickly. All right. Anywho, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you organize your embossing folders. If you have them, any ideas, tips, hacks would be greatly appreciated. And if you did enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up. You may be interested in this other video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.